Saturday on Denver 7 News. It's a weather action day and snow is moving in for the weekend. How much you can expect in your neighborhood come Monday. We are prepared if a more contagious variant outcompetes Omicron. Today marks two years since the first COVID case was confirmed here in Colorado. Why health leaders are remaining cautious as we take a look back at how quickly everything changed. I hope to do it as long as I can. And later, some Denver 7 everyday heroes with big hearts sending medical supplies to those in need. And we start with our weather action day status to kick off your weekend. Currently, it's cloudy skies over the metro area. We saw a couple of showers roll in overnight. The main snow event, though, looks to arrive tomorrow. Well, good morning. I'm Jessica Crawford. Welcome to Denver 7 News. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Thank you so much for joining us. And whew, big changes for this weekend here across the state. This next cold front already bringing snow to portions of the high country. We saw a few showers roll through overnight and early this morning. But right now it's mainly cloudy and dry for the Denver area. But further off to the west, a live look near Vail where snow has been falling this morning. Some pretty significant snow totals we're expecting with this storm. So wonderful news for our ski resorts. But you can see radar and satellite. We have been dealing with some snow packed roadways, especially across the far eastern plains and into the mountains. Taking you through future casts, you can see gusty winds coming in from the north. It's going to be a lot chillier today with highs only in the 30s, 20s and 30s into the mountains with snow falling through the afternoon and evening, especially down south near Telluride and the portions of our San Juan Mountains. More widespread snow moves into the I-25 corridor and east for tomorrow. We'll talk more about snow totals and how long this chilly weather will stick around. But first, we want to give you a peek at the roadways all across town. We are seeing a break in the snowfall with dry roads. Currently, we have our photographer Alan driving for us in and around the mountains, but we have definitely seen some wet and snow packed roadways as we take you to more cameras here from CDOT, especially through Glenwood Canyon up over Vail Pass. Make sure you have the appropriate traction on your tires the further west and to the higher elevations you go. It is going to be slick and icy in spots all weekend long. We'll take you through how much snow we're expecting in the mountains as well still to come. Thank you, Katie. Breaking news, one person is now dead after a shooting overnight. Denver police say the incident happened near Alameda and Havana just before midnight last night. The shooting victim was sent to the hospital with injuries where he died. Denver police don't have a suspect in custody right now. If you have information, call Crime Stoppers. Today marks two years since the first COVID-19 case in Colorado, and we've really come a long way since then. Denver 7's Patrick Perez is live in our newsroom this morning to break it all down for us. Patrick. Hey, Jessica, I'm sure many people will agree these past two years have felt like 10 years or more living through this pandemic. Some unfortunately have lost loved ones to COVID-19 and others have lost their jobs and had to start all over. It has not been easy by any means. Over the past two years, we've gone from full lockdown to partial lockdown, from mass on to mass off, and then on again and now off again in several ways of new variants. Oh, and remember those color-coded dials that determined how much capacity a restaurant could have? We have definitely had to make a lot of adjustments to get through this, and it appears that we are finally on the other side. State health officials are now saying we are in a good place, but they're ready for anything. We are prepared if a more contagious variant outcompetes Omicron or is better at evading our immune systems. Um, we also don't know the level to which immunity will wane by next winter. And since Colorado's first COVID case two years ago, 1.3 million people have been infected and more than 60,000 were hospitalized at some point and 12,500 people have died. Now there's new evidence that points to a seafood market in Wuhan, China as a place where the coronavirus started. Researchers say it's the strongest evidence to date that COVID originated in animals at a market. An international team of scientists published extensive papers online. They say the virus most likely jumped from a caged wild animal to people. Jessica. Thank you, Patrick, for that overview. And since the first case was confirmed, you may remember our way of life changed fast. The week before the first case, Denver Public Schools sent a letter to parents saying right now this virus is not spreading in the United States. Colorado has no cases of the disease and the vast majority of Americans have a low risk of exposure. The Northeast Colorado Health Department sent out an email saying the risk to the general public is low. But two days later, the CDC said COVID-19 is a serious public health threat. Five days after that, we had our first cases here in Colorado. And over the next three weeks, things shut 
shut down quickly. On March 14th, the governor closed Colorado ski resorts. On March 17th, the governor closed theaters, casinos and gyms statewide. Dining rooms for restaurants and bars were closed too. The governor ordered schools to close starting March 23rd. Then the governor announced a statewide stay at home order that started March 26th. What a journey it has been, and it's now been a little over a year since we started vaccinating the public here in Colorado. And since then, nearly 4 million Coloradans have been fully vaccinated. That's about 73% of the eligible population, but in communities of color, the vaccination rate is lower. The state is trying to change that. In the last week, nearly 8,000 people in Colorado got vaccinated. There are vax clinics this weekend at Waterworld, Dick's Sporting Goods Park, some churches, shopping malls, and rec centers, plus other locations. And you can get all the locations and times right now on the state's COVID-19 website. We're here to protest the war and uh, we were here against the Russian aggression. At the state capitol last night, Coloradans gathered to not only demand Russian forces leave Ukraine, but to also remember those who've been killed in the fighting. One man we talked to is from Ukraine and has friends there. He's calling on the U.S. and NATO to put a no-fly zone over his home country. The Ukraine really needs uh, protection in the sky, right? We need to close the skies over Ukraine, and especially with um, uh, the nuclear plants there. And, you know, that is a possibility of major catastrophe. So do it. Close the sky over Ukraine. Uh, that will help us you know, preserve a lot of lives. This morning, as Ukraine's president is denouncing NATO for refusing to impose a no-fly zone over the country, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is now in Poland. And this comes as Russian President Vladimir Putin says countries imposing a no-fly zone would be considered participants in a military conflict. And just this morning, a Russian plane was shot down. Here's ABC's Karina Mitchell. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is criticizing NATO after the alliance refused to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. In an angry televised address, Zelensky called NATO weak and said the alliance would be to blame for any additional civilian deaths. Earlier, Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended NATO's decision, saying a no-fly zone could lead to NATO planes shooting down Russian planes and an even bigger conflict. We also have a responsibility, as the Secretary General said, to ensure that the war doesn't spill over even beyond Ukraine. Meantime, Russian forces continue their unrelenting bombardment of civilian areas. After an intense fight, Russian troops have taken control of a large nuclear power plant in southeastern Ukraine. A fire there led to fears of a potential nuclear disaster. But nuclear scientists say the fire is out and radiation levels are normal. Citizens and soldiers oh, continue to prepare. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Lviv. What is that? A mine? These are mines. So they're, do they work still? Yeah. So this is to what, blow up Russian tanks? Yes. While Ukrainian men stay behind to fight as Ukraine's martial law requires, their wives and children are desperately seeking refuge in neighboring countries. In Russia, the Kremlin and parliament are now threatening reporters with prison time for spreading what they call fake news, potentially outlawing words like war or invasion. Western networks, including ABC, pulling out of Russia, not broadcasting from the country. The State Department condemning Russia's move, saying, quote, the people of Russia did not choose this war. Putin did. They have a right to know about the death, suffering and destruction being inflicted by their government on the people of Ukraine. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In other news, some wild horses are up for adoption this weekend by the Bureau of Land Management says this is necessary to protect Colorado ecosystems and also causing so much controversy. Plus, if you're looking to get outside this summer, how you can use a recreation.gov account to get into some of our national parks.